It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood. A neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, "Would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor?" Mr. Fred McFeely Rogers was born to Nancy and James Rogers on March 20th, 1928. In La Trobe, Pennsylvania. As a young boy, he often volunteered at La Trobe Hospital. Little did he know his life of service and making others feel better was just beginning. When Mr. Rogers was a kid, he was often made fun of for his weight, gaining the nickname Fat Freddy. So, Rogers was left to make friends of his own. He picked up puppeteering as a hobby, finding companionship in his ventriloquist dummy. This interest would stay with him through the rest of his life. Fred was very shy, introverted. He didn't have a happy childhood. He was lonely. He really didn't have any friends. And he had a, he had a puppet theater when he was very little, like five, six, seven. On the third floor, they, his parents gave him a whole room for his puppet theater. And then his mother began inviting one particular friend from school to come home with him at lunch. And she would come home for lunch, they'd have lunch, and then he would perform his puppet theater. And he'd watch her very closely to see what did she like, what did she react to. And that was the beginning of Fred as a programmer with puppets. Mr. Rogers graduated from Pittsburgh Theological Seminary with a bachelor's degree in divinity. He chose to make it his mission to minister to kids and their families through the use of television. His journey in television actually stemmed from a hatred of it, as Rogers told CNN. Before creating Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, Fred Rogers worked as a floor director on Your Hit Parade, The Kate Smith Hour, and The Voice of Firestone. He then worked with Josie Carey in developing The Children's Corner, in which the characters that are known and loved today were created. The team of two created the puppets Daniel the Striped Tiger, King Friday the Eighth, Queen Sarah Saturday, X the Owl, Henrietta, and years later, Lady Elaine. When Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood first aired on February 19th, 1968, children's television was never the same. What do you two remember most about Mr. Rogers from when you were younger? Very nice man taught everybody about accepting others. I like you just the way you are. Oh, that was his catchphrase. How do you two think Mr. Rogers uh, impacted the Pittsburgh community? Ooh, oh, he greatly impacted. He impacted how we view others, how we accept diversity, and how to get in touch with our feelings and talk about it, and not to be angry. He didn't like anger, all the anger in television. I concur. Of Mr. Rogers' teachings and your own teachings here at South Ed. Yes, I accept everybody and I am nice to everybody every single day. Absolutely. Just walk in kindness. That's us. What do you two think is the most important lesson that Mr. Rogers taught in his shows? Acceptance. Yes. It's okay to be different. It's okay to have your feelings. Yep. Miss Perry wasn't the only one that Mr. Rogers impacted. According to an article from the New Yorker, Make-A-Wish kids would often visit the set. When Mr. Rogers would make a mistake in developing a theme from the episode, the kids would realize that even adults make mistakes. Students from across the nation were interviewed at University of Miami for News at the U about Mr. Rogers' impact. They recall that he was like a friend and he was able to talk to children in a way that they understood. Mr. Rogers is even credited with saving PBS and children's television as a whole. In early 1969, there was talk about cutting the budget for children's television. Hearing about this, Rogers decided to take a stand and speak in front of the Senate Subcommittee on Communications to argue this budget cut. I give an expression of care every day to each child. 
to help him realize that he is unique. I end the program by saying, you've made this day a special day by just your being you. There's no person in the whole world like you, and I like you just the way you are. The more Roger spoke, the more the committee listened. He had them stunned with his well-prepared speech that discussed the advantages of children to television programs. By the end of the speech, their minds on the subject had completely changed. I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful. <laughs> Looks like you just earned the $20 million. <laughs> <laughs> Rogers was able to convince the subcommittee to keep children's television programs and extend the budget to $20 million. He is one of the big reasons that children's shows are as prominent as they are today. What do you remember most about Rich Mr. Rogers when you were younger? I remember watching Mr. Rogers with my brother. I used to love when he would come into the home and he would sing his famous song. He would put on his cardigan. He would change his shoes and put on his sneakers or his tennis shoes. And he would feed the fish. I would love seeing um, the red trolley go around the track. Um, I, Mr. Rogers taught kids about like other neighbors, other neighborhoods. He would visit other neighborhoods. He would go to the zoo. He would go to a farm. He would go to museums. Do you incorporate any of Mr. Rogers' teachings into your teachings at your school? I think all teachers do this. Mr. Rogers had a calmness about himself. I teach my students every day to always be kind to each other, to show compassion. It's okay to make mistakes, you just have to learn from them. And I also remind them, you never know what someone is going through. So just treat each other how you want to be treated, with respect, kindness. What do you think is the most important lesson Mr. Rogers taught in his show? Uh, I think he taught people and kids how to be kind to others, um, be a good friend, be a good neighbor. He also taught people to believe in themselves, have compassion towards others. How do you think Mr. Rogers impacted the Pittsburgh community? I feel like he had a huge impact on the Pittsburgh community. He created a community of kindness, respect, gratitude, his show was based in Pittsburgh and produced locally at PBS. Kids from all over the world watched him. And we, there is even a statue honoring him. Some are even in heaven. All of us have special ones who have loved us into being. Would you just take, along with me, 10 seconds to think of the people who have helped you become who you are. Those who have cared about you and wanted what was best for you in life. Ten seconds of silence. I'll watch the time. As you can see, Mr. Rogers was able to inspire the younger generation and the older generations. On a melancholy February 27th in 2003, Fred McFeely Rogers was pronounced dead. The cause of death was stomach cancer. Although Mr. Rogers had left this earth, his spirit and lessons still live on through the youth generation he had inspired. This generation would pass on the lessons they had recalled from Mr. Rogers to their kids and many generations to come. It happens so often. I walk down the street and someone 20 or 30 or 40 years old will come up to me and say, you are Mr. Rogers, aren't you? And then they tell me about growing up with the neighborhood and how they're passing on to the children they know what they found to be important in our television work. Like expressing their feelings through music and art and dance and sports and drama and computers and writing and, and invariably we end our little time together with a hug. I'm just so proud of all of you who have grown up with us and I know how tough it is some days to look with hope and confidence on the months and years ahead. But I would like to tell you what I often told you when you were much younger. I like you just the way you are.